Yeah, again, uh, as always, uh, thanks for coming out and joining us. Thanks a lot. Um, obviously, want to wish you guys and your families a, a happy Thanksgiving as uh, we start the Thanksgiving week. Uh, just a little bit about our schedule this week, obviously, with the game. Saturday, Thanksgiving, Thursday, we adjust things a little bit. Um, you know, we, instead of Thursday afternoon, we'll go in the morning, uh, Thanksgiving morning, and try to be off the field by noon to give our local players that have opportunities to get home, um, to go uh, home and spend time with their family and friends during, during this uh, holiday. Uh, meetings and practice and those things will take place in the morning. And like I said, most of the local players will have opportunity to go home um, and get back here in time for Friday morning where we'll get into our Friday routine. Um, you know, obviously the Michigan game, uh, as I said, after the, the game Saturday was one of those games that I didn't feel very good coming out of that we did a great job as coaches or players. Uh, there haven't been many of those games this season where I was disappointed in our effort or disappointed in uh, us putting our players in the best possible position to have success, but this one was one. And, um, you know, we'll, we've worked really hard uh, to get these things corrected. Um, as I said before, you know, we're still chasing that sixth victory and uh, we're out of time. This is one opportunity. Uh, it's kind of like I told our team, it's like being in a wild card playoff game. It's win or go home. You know, for us, uh, as we talked about taking the next step as a program, obviously one of the, f the first next steps is becoming a bowl eligible team to where that becomes our standard. And, you know, for us to be this late in the season and still have an opportunity uh, to compete for that opportunity, um, you know, I take my hats off to this team because we faced a lot of adversity this season. Um, obviously, when you lose a good amount of your players, your production on both sides of the ball, and we're still, you know, have a chance on Saturday to, to, to win a six game to put us in position to go to a bowl game, I think that uh, would be a great accomplishment as well as a great testament for the seniors in this program that they're leaving this program better than when they came because not one of these guys have ever participated in a bowl game. Um, I'm pleased with how they responded. You know, they showed up yesterday for work. Uh, they've continued to put the effort in, and now what we've got to do is, like I talked about with our team, is have the necessary focus. Um, this won't be an easy game. Obviously, Rutgers is playing just like we are for that sixth win, so it makes it a, uh, a game that, that we both are very desperate to win. And when that happens, you know, I anticipate it to be a four-quarter tough, hard-fought game. And as I always say, it's hard to win on the road in the Big Ten. So. We'll have our work cut out for us. Uh, you know, I got a lot of respect for Greg and the program he's built there. And uh, I know our players are ready to, to, to go up to, to New Jersey and compete to win number six. Um, our captains for this week will be Spencer Anderson, Talia Tungavaloa, Jordan Mosley, and Tayon Fleet Davis. We'll serve as our game captains for this week. And I guess with that, I'll open it up to questions. <laughs> We love our clients, and you'll see that if you trust us at the Jackwood Small Group, the big dogs from the small firm. Find us online at bigdogsmallfirm.com. Mike, jumping right into Rutgers, uh, looking at their numbers, they're second best in the Big Ten at getting off the field on third, third down. down. Yep. What makes them so special in that situation on, the, on that side of the ball? What sort of challenge is that going to provide you guys this Saturday? Yeah, I think the big thing is, you know, they, they are very skilled players in their secondary. Um, they play a lot of man coverage on third down. They're able to keep guys in front of them. You know, their nose guard, number 50, I think, is probably one of the best nose guards we'll face in, in, in terms of being a very active guy. Uh, he's not very big, but I tell you what, he's really disruptive. You know, 97 on the edge is another one of those uh, disruptive defensive ends. So. You know, they do a good job of getting you into some third and long situations, which usually aren't to the advantage of the offense. But they do a great job of, you know, executing their man coverage techniques. And they've got guys in the secondary, you know, number zero, their safety is a physical player, does a great job of, you know, they blitz him. They, they play him deep middle of the, the, in the deep middle part of the field. And he plays very physical. So, um, you know, those guys do a good job on third down. Network solutions, managed IT, and technical support, Viner Forgates makes your company work. Solutions to protect your business from WatchGuard, including firewalls and endpoint protection. Protect your company and 
Make your company work with solutions from Viner Forgates. Hey, Coach, and kind of flipping to the other side of the ball for Rutgers, uh, Bill Melton, I know, is a big guy for him. That's kind of integral to what they do on offense. So what kind of sticks out about him uh, to you guys on tape? Yeah, I think the big thing is when you watch him, you know, he's one of those guys, when you look at the receivers with, uh, you know, number two, I think, is out, obviously, with injury. But he's one of those guys, I think he has, like, over 90 targets. So that means to me that he's a guy that they try to get involved and get the ball to. You know, between him and Pacheco, uh, you know, they've got the, the kind of wildcat quarterback. Uh, both, you know, those three guys all do a really good job as well as, you know, like I said, Vidral is the guy that, Vidral is the guy that makes this thing go. But with Bo Melton, his skill set, you know, he had a pretty, pretty good game against us last year. And, and he's one of the ones that when you watch him on offense that they try to feature you know, him and Pacheco are the two guys that, that they try to get the ball to. And we've got to obviously do our part to try to eliminate them as much as we can from their game plan. Um, when you look at some of your young defensive linemen, like Daryl Jackson, Taze Johnson, I mean, how much has them getting into games, getting some game reps, helped them grow as they're just in their freshman year? Yeah, I know with Big, with big Daryl, with Daryl Jackson, I mean, um, you look at him and he, he's playing like a veteran player right now for us. Um, and, you know, we've implemented Taze. Taze's played quite a bit in what we call our Dime Rabbits package because he is a twitchy guy in the interior that can rush the passer. Over the last two, three weeks, we've played a lot of Tommy King Basote as well. So, you know, that was one of the, the rooms that we tried to get answered or, or at least get fixed over the last recruiting course or recruiting cycle. And, you know, all those guys have contributed greatly to our, you know, development. Now, to me, obviously, we're not playing great on defense right now. Um, but I do think the reps and the meaningful reps that these guys are taking will benefit us as we continue to build the program. Uh, hey, hey, Coach. Uh, this team, like, this, despite a lot of tough losses you guys had this year, uh, you're obviously fighting for a bowl eligibility. Just what has been your message to these guys? You know, like, despite this three-game losing streak, like, there's still something to play for coming on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, I think you hit it right on its head. Uh, when you have a chance to compete for bowl eligibility and you're at the last part of your season, um, that's something we haven't had around here for some time, you know, where it's, you know, win or go home. So as I told them yesterday, if I have to motivate you to, if I got to say some things to motivate you to go out and put the work in this week that's necessary to, to prepare you to go up to Rutgers and play to our ability, um, then we, I, it's not the team I thought we have. But I can tell you this is that team, and this team uh, continues to work. Like I said, Saturday I wasn't happy with the way we coached or played or executed against a, a, one of the best teams that we faced all season, and, and it showed. But I do think these guys got a lot of pride. Um, we've got 25 seniors that uh, dearly would love to extend their season and their time as Terps. They've been through a lot. They've done a lot for this program. And I think it would be only fitting that this class has the opportunity to kind of lay that the top of the foundation um, for us to build on, you know, those extra practices you the extra practices you aren't you earn by going to a bowl are very necessary and meaningful when you develop a young team, which we still have. And so I think those guys are doing a great job of pulling these guys along. And so um, we're excited about the opportunity. I mean, like I said, it's as close to a playoff game as you'll be a part of at this level and you know. We need to put the work in the next few days and then go up and give them all we got. Hey, Coach Locks, back here. Good to see you. Uh, mm -hmm. I got a fun one for you today. Uh, with Thanksgiving right. coming up, what's your uh, favorite Thanksgiving side dish? Mm. Man, you took Dave's stuff, man. I was, uh, he, 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 he just jumped right in. But I mean, you know, as, as I've always said, I'm one of those guys, you know, being a, a DMV guy, kind of like the crab stuffing. You know, take some nice lump crab meat, the Maryland blue crab meat, and put it in your stuffing and kind of, I'm a big stuffing guy, as you can tell. So that's probably my best, my favorite side. And the other one we're asking is turkey or ham? Man, you know, I, I, you know, between my wife and Abby, they've kind of taken me off of red meat. And so I do think I've earned the right to maybe have a little honey baked ham this weekend or this Thursday. <laughs> Uh, but I'm, I'm saying both. I mean, you know, it is Thanksgiving, so I would say both. But it's hard to turn down a nice honey baked ham, man. Yeah, I guess I guess we'll jump in. Rookie. Oh, no. yeah. That's my thing. No. Uh, what, 
looking at Thanksgiving, what jumps off the table? What makes this, uh, what's going to make this meal special for you to be able to spend time with the family uh, yeah. a couple days before the final game? Yeah, I mean, I think obviously this time of year is when you really do start thinking about what you're thankful for. And obviously for me, man, and I say this a lot, and, you know, uh, this is the, the job that I always coveted. So been very, very thankful for this opportunity. And, you know, we, we probably um, still have a lot of work to do, but I'm pleased with the direction that we're headed. I'm very thankful that I was given this opportunity to lead a group of, of guys, this team, um, because I do know their stories. And, and, and this senior group really has a, a spot there in my heart because I do know what they've been through. And, you know, after a couple of years, I said, you know, you come in kind of as the stepdad the first year or two, where it's like, hey, you ain't my dad. But then after, you know, two or three years, after spending time with each other, you get to know each other. And this group has embraced everything that, that we've brought to the table. So real thankful for these 25 seniors and the, these players that I get opportunity to coach and develop and, you know, for more than just winning games, but developing them for their life. So for me to have a platform like this, uh, being a guy that grew up in the southwest section of D.C., went to Baloo High School, and to be able to lead this team, very thankful for that. I have two questions. My first one is uh, for you personally, um, you've, you've, you grew, grew up in this area. You've been around this program and have a strong relationship with this program, obviously. What will it mean to you to be able to get that, the program to that being bowl eligible? Well, I mean, that's what it's all about. I mean, I didn't come here to, to, to not be a part of building this thing into what I think it could become. And I, again, uh, when I talk about the best is ahead, which, you know, a motto that the late Trevor Moag gave me and that I used a bunch when I talk about this program, um, to get this thing to where we can become a bowl eligible team as our standard, that's the first piece. But I really do believe that with the investment that has been made in the Maryland football, um, with the, the, the talent in this area, that we have an opportunity to really build this thing into something that could be very, very powerful in college football. And uh, that's my vision because I've been here before when we've gotten it to that stage and played a major role in helping uh, get it to that point. And I know it can be done because I've been here when we've done it. It's a lot of heavy lifting obviously involved from three years ago walking in to dealing with the tragedy of Jordan McNair and developing the team and, you know, building our fan base back. and. You know, I'm just glad we got fans that are disappointed that we're, you know, fighting for a six and six season. That to me is something in itself from where we were when I got here to where we are now. So uh, it means everything to me to try to get this thing to where we're bowl eligible. That becomes a standard and that we build on that. And I do think and believe we have a chance to the next few years compete for what I think is a Big Ten championship because of the investments being made, because of the type of kids we've been able to recruit. And now it's about developing them. Now, uh, I'm going back to Thanksgiving food. Um, is there a particular dish that you think gets too much hype or you think is overrated? Yeah. I am not a big sweet potato guy, man. Oh, uh, like, I'm a t I, I mean, for some reason, I, I only would eat Vanita Loxley, rest in peace, my mom's, because she either put a lot of brown sugar and a lot of marshmallows in it, <laughs> but just like the old just sweet potato cut up and just kind of – not a big fan and definitely not into the cranberry, the jiggly thing on there. Like, you can keep that, keep that off to the side. Like, don't even put it near me. The texture just kind of gets me. He likes cranberry? Well, 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 I guarantee you, Miss Adeline, Grandma Adeline knows how to make them like Vanita Loxley did. But, you know, I, I can't eat, eat everybody's uh, sweet potatoes. Happy Thanksgiving, guys. Enjoy it.